bringing out the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Story swirling about Nealon and the possibility that he'll move to Ohio State next year. We'll explore that this afternoon. Now it is Oklahoma State. Lost only twice all season to the Big Two with the Big Eight. Oklahoma and Nebraska. If they win, you can expect the Cowboys to jump up and finish in the top ten in the AP poll. Now, Pat Hayden, that coin flip, because of the wind, looms rather important. Well, you're absolutely right. We talked to both coaches this week, and they Over said here. if the weather was inclement as it is now, they may just decide if they won the toss and defend a goal. And the wind will be at Oklahoma State's back. They will have the wind here in the opening quarter. It's going to be blown from right to left. Now, we mentioned the coaching situation and the rumors about Nealon. Let's go down and get more on that from John Docker. Doc? Thank you, Brent. They've been flying around here talk about uh, Nealon getting the job at Ohio State, and it's true. He is one of the two leading candidates as far as my sources can come up with. John Cooper, Ohio State, is the, uh, from Arizona State, is the other one, and Nealon all week long has told us and his team and his staff that he has not yet been offered the job at Ohio State. He's trying to keep his team focused on the game about to begin here and not the distractions about the possibility of the Ohio State job. We'll keep you posted on that. Now back to you, Brent. All right, John. And so we have touched on the weather, and here it is right now, 35 degrees, but the wind will be the most important element of the game right now. Gusting up to 20 miles an hour. It'll blow from right to left, so Oklahoma State will have it at their back when we start the game. And Brent, both of these teams have played in some bad weather this year. West Virginia started their first four games this year in very windy and rainy weather. And Oklahoma State, when you play in the big age, you're always going to play in some wind. And Pat Jones said they played in wind all season long. He didn't think it was going to be that much of a factor for his team. No, West Virginia getting ready down here on the near sideline and across the way it's Matt Jones and the Cowboys. What about West Virginia's offense? What can we look for here today? Well, they really had the advantage in the offensive line, a very good, solid uh, uh, veteran offensive line in West Virginia. I think what you're going to see, particularly when they have the, they're going against the win, is a lot of smash ball, a lot of runs inside tackle. But they have a very talented quarterback in Major Harris who specializes in running the option, and then he sets up the option pass deep downfield to his tall wide receiver, John Talley. Both of these teams are blessed with outstanding return men. For West Virginia, one of them is a former quarterback turned wide receiver, and that's Tally. So Blanchard will kick it off, and there is Tally, his brother, Daryl Tally, an outstanding linebacker with the Buffalo Bills. He came to West Virginia a quarterback, and then John was switched to wide receiver. And he's one of the more dangerous receivers the Mountaineers have had in some time, I suppose, too, because it's a bowl game. You might even consider him throwing the ball on an end around here today. Although the weather conditions are not ideal for Razzle Dazzle. So we're set to go in the Sun Bowl. Oklahoma State will kick it off for West Virginia. Tally will come out. Out near the 20 yard line before he's brought down. Now let's meet Major Harris and this West Virginia offense. The freshman quarterback, he's one of the finest freshman quarterbacks in the nation, destined to have a great career. The running backs, and they'll be critical. A.B. Brown, can he stay healthy? Taylor is the fullback. They'll be the workhorses, especially going into the wind. Tally and Smith, they're the outside receivers in this offense. And Major Harris brings West Virginia up to the line. Brown on first down. Battled his way for three, four yards on that first carry. Now the offensive line blocking for Brown. We see Koken is the man in the middle. 
How about this offensive line as a unit, Pat? Very good. They're all fourth year uh, red shirts, so they've been in the program for uh, four years now. They've played at least two years together. The strength is on the left side. Stroya and Phillips are the dominant players on the offensive line. Harris always a threat to run. Goes with Brown again. So this will bring up about a third and four. Not quite that far, actually. Ron Williams making the tackle. If the Oklahoma State has a strength defensively, it is their speed running sideline to sideline. They're vulnerable when you run right at them, but they're tough to outrun. And right now we've seen West Virginia try two outside plays by Brown, but unsuccessful. And that's why they're in a third and long situation. If you're going to have success against this defense, you need to run inside. Now he's working into this stiff wind. He'll put it up. Under pressure, receiver covered, ball swings loose, he gets it out of bounds. So West Virginia will punt. It's three and out. Well, Pat Jones' first series on defense went exactly the way he wanted. He defended the, the goal, took the wind at his back. He, his defense played well and forced the punt. And now they'll get very good field position with a strong 15 or 20 mile an hour wind behind him. Carrion, punting for West Virginia. And one of the return men is the ever-dangerous Sanders. But it goes to his buddy, and that's Gillum. So down there near midfield, and it'll be the first series coming up for Oklahoma State. There's a nine-yard return by Gillum off that 43-yard punt. Snow flurries now starting to swirl through the air. Mike Gundy, the quarterback for the Cowboys. Limbrick, the blocker, Thurman Thomas, you've heard about him all season long. The receivers are extremely tall. They both go 6'4", Williams may be about 6'5". He also is a former quarterback. Small corners. The flea flicker right away. Here's Dykes. And Dykes is alone inside the 10. Down near the 5-yard line. How about that front opener? And a terrific call on the first play of the game. It was set up beautifully. They had the wind behind them. Everybody's thinking Thurman Thomas is going to carry the ball when you get excellent field position, of course. And after he got it, he just pitched it back. And Gundy hit the crossing route to Dykes. And this is something that Dykes has specialized all year long. He'll get up on one side of the formation, run the crossing route to get the ball to him while he's on the move because he's very good after he catches the ball. So that defensive backfield bit run when Thomas came to the line. That's all they needed. Now Thurman picks his way close and in. Oklahoma State strikes first. And we talked about how wide open their offense is. It was terrific two calls there on the first couple of plays. So now Blanchard set to attempt the extra point. And here on their opening series, the Cowboys put a quick seven points up. It took two plays. No, it wasn't much of a drive, a two-play drive, but here's the look as uh, Thurman Thomas. You're going to see him do this a lot. They like to pitch him the ball, and he'll either run all the way to the outside or just find a little seam, a soft spot on the inside. And he just snuck under a couple of tackles there for the touchdown. That's a nice run. 7-0, Oklahoma State. Let me quickly correct our graphic. When you went to commercial, we had it reversed. Oklahoma State leading West Virginia 7-0. Pat Hayden, what about Pat Jones and the decision on the coin flip? Well, he after the def after West Virginia deferred, he decided to defend the goal and take the win. And I think that was exactly the right move in this kind of weather. Of course, his defense stuffed uh, West Virginia on three plays. Then they came up with a big play. So his tactical decision to defend the goal was an excellent coaching decision. Two plays. The flea flicker starts it out. Year after year, we see the big plays, the surprise plays in bowl games. The youngsters have a few weeks to put in some new wrinkles, and they make the most of it, don't they? Oh, this is time to have fun, and particularly when you're West Virginia, you have, you've had a six and five year. This is the type of game we can come out and have some fun and throw the ball around. There's Tally, number seven, standing just inside the goal line. Deja vu quickly. <laughs> he was just standing there a few moments ago. Whack 
knocks it back down. And this one caught that breeze and sailed out of the end zone. It'll come up to the 20 yard line for Major Harris. Let's take a look at the Oklahoma State defense. Anchored there in the middle by Kim Johnson. What about this group, Pat? Again, we've talked about their speed. No dominating players uh, like they've had, like Leslie O'Neill in the past. Good speed. They've created a lot of fumbles this year. They've created 36 fumbles on the year because they can really run and hit. Here's Brown. Big hole. Comes free at the 40. Out of bounds. 23 yards for West Virginia on that run and a huge hole on that right side. Nice block by the tight end as he comes and cracks down on the inside linebacker that makes the play. And watch Brown as he sees the little hole. The linebacker, 53, Drain overran the play. He was the middle linebacker, thought that Brown was going to go all the way to the outside. But Brown, with a good vision, cut it right back inside for the nice game. Now it's the fullback. Taylor. West Virginia will use its fullback more than Oklahoma State. Now the rest of the defense, and there is Drain, one of the better young linebackers at Oklahoma State. Gillum and Weller at the corners, and two big, tough safeties, Smith and Decker. Put it up off the option, and he'll go deep down the middle for Tally. Tally can't get it inside the five. And may have injured a knee when he went down. He's definitely holding the right knee. Nonetheless, it was a remarkable throw into about a 20-mile-an-hour win by Major Harris. Number seven, John Tally, the West Virginia player down the field. And Brent, this is the play that we have, you and I have seen uh, Syracuse use so uh, successfully this year. You set it up by running the option play. Then the quarterback comes down the line of scrimmage and the free safety jumps up because he has got option responsibility. And then you run the post pattern behind the free safety who had already bitten on the option fake. And Tally has caught in about six touchdown passes on that pass alone. You can see him crash down hard on that left knee. Grantis Bell, number one. Yeah, this kind of you know, knee. Pat, I said he went down on the uh, on the left knee, yeah. but they're obviously it, looking at the other one. He must have twisted it, and it down. wasn't the knee that uh, that made impact with the artificial turf here in the Sun Bowl. You know, we've talked about the wind so much. I think the wind blew the ball away from Tally on this play. The ball was pretty well thrown into a stiff wind, and then it goes away from him. But you're right, Brent. He's a tall receiver. He's 6'5", and I think he's, he, his, uh, he just gets tangled up there. He, his right leg, yeah, hits the defensive back right there. Oh, yeah. That's what happened as Weller went up over the top of him. Mm, yeah. He got tangled up with the defensive back, and that's where the injury was sustained. And there's his backup. That's right, Grandis Bell's had a pretty good year as well, but we've seen one of the things that West Virginia wants to do, Brent, and that's work on Wade Weller, number 28, the corner for Oklahoma State. They feel they can beat him deep. They actually had to play there. One play the folks should look for, Pat, as John Talley comes off to the sideline, and he'll be tended to. We hope that knee injury is not serious. We'll get a report from John Dockery on that. One play involving Major Harris that we should talk about because it was very effective against Syracuse. When he runs the option down the line, and you can see now the snowflakes starting to fall here in El Paso as Bell, the replacement, goes out wide to the left. He'll take about three steps down the line, then he'll pull back out, and sometimes the corners will bite. This was a straight drop, and he just keeps it. Running the quarterback draw, and he can take off, and he elects to slide down there at the 41-yard line of the Cowboys. What a fine-looking athlete he is. 13 yards, and he stays healthy. 
you're looking at a young man who when he becomes a senior at West Virginia is going to be vying for the All-American quarterback spot. Well, he is terrific. 215 pounds of athlete. And how many times have we seen this year this year on nickel defenses when teams play man to man defense. If you have a quarterback who can run you're in business in the quarterback draw. I come back with the uh, tailback Anthony Brown and Decker wraps him up. West Virginia, Virginia is predominantly a running football team. They've run more and more option uh, plays as the season has gone along to take advantage of the strengths of Major Harris. But it's been the offensive line that's been the key the last seven games of the season for West Virginia. Oklahoma State is not very tough against the run either. They give up about four and a half yards of rush. And here's Taylor picking his way against the middle. And now he's inside the 30-yard line. So on a nasty day here in El Paso, the way it's going, we could wind up with a high-scoring affair. You know, this kind of weather, I think, really is to West Virginia's advantage because in the offensive and defensive lines, I believe they really have an advantage. Big, strong offensive line. When they go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, they take away some of the quickness of that Oklahoma State defense that likes to stunt and slant. Touch of Christmas in Texas. Inside the 25 with Taylor, the fullback, carrying that time. They have great depth in that West Virginia backfield. Brown is in there now, and I'm sure we will see Johnson and Napoleon. Taylor at fullback, and Harris also an excellent run. You know, Brown gained 836 yards, but he had so many injuries, they really believe he's a 1,200-yard back if he's healthy. Dean Smith in motion. Harris again keeps it. Inside the 20-yard line. Had to get to the 18 for a first down. Well, this has been a nice little drive by West Virginia. We've seen them throw the ball deep or try the deep pass. We've seen a quarterback draw. We've seen some outside plays, pitch plays to Brown, and the fullback getting some tough yards inside. So it's been a nice drive. There's something about nasty weather. <laughs> you love this, don't you? Love it. Dave Bing Crosby would love. Okay. He ran 17 yards inside the five-yard line. Yeah, I think they're going to call a clip against a wide receiver from West Virginia. It was number 82, Calvin Phillips, who was trying to lend a hand and clip the defensive man. Costly mistake by the Mountaineers. Keith Wynn was also downfield helping clear the way. Impressed so far with uh, A.B. Brown is running to Brennan. He's got these very big legs, real big thighs, and he's real tough to get your arms around him and bring him down. He breaks a lot of tackles. Oklahoma State leading West Virginia, opening quarter of the Sun Bowl. John Dockery, Jim Nance, and Pat Hayden. I'm Brett Musburger. We wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. And yes, it is snowing in El Paso, Texas. Harris, the freshman quarterback, keeping and getting to the 11-yard line. West Virginia must get to the 8 for a first down. Let's find out about Tally. John Dockery, how is he? Brent, it's not as serious as you might have thought. It's a sprain of the knee, but the doctor just told me that he probably be, would not be back today. John Talley out for this game, but not a serious knee injury as far as the doctor can tell. Now the wind and the snow picking up. He gets a first down again. And that's been the success inside. That offensive line on this drive has done a marvelous job just dominating up front early. Coke in the center gets a nice block of double team. Let's see 55 Kovac, the right guard. First he doubled on the nose and he came off him and blocked the linebacker. Kovac got two men. Now some of the snow is starting to stick here on the artificial turf. And timeout. He'll use his first to three here. And come over and talk about it. They've got a first and goal. That'll give us an opportunity. To 
Well, season's greetings, folks, and we're not coming your way from Green Bay. This is El Paso, Texas, and we got a wind howling and the snow whipping in everybody's face, and the Mountaineers trying to score. And a day like this, you got to get it fast if you can. Taylor, the fullback, battling down close now. They will have to have the sweepers come out here if this continues and show the officials where that goal line is down there. Uh, Pat, what about a team early in a snowstorm? Well, you know, usually in games like this, most of the scoring comes in the first quarter before the conditions get unbearable. And we've seen, uh, obviously, Oklahoma State score in two plays, and West Virginia's come right back. They run it in. That's A.B. Brown. Nice blocks up front, Brent. Smiter, the right tackle and the tight end, have really done a job on this drive. Now the holder is down there trying to clear a spot at the 10-yard line. That's Mike Temko, one of the backup quarterbacks. He'll be the holder here. Charlie Bauman, number eight. He'll attempt to tie it. He does. We've got eight minutes and 49 seconds to go in the opening quarter. We take another look at Brown's touchdown. And it was the right side of the offensive line who really came off the ball, got some good fitting, uh, footing, and opened up a nice little gap there for Brown. That's a big hole for down by the goal line. Again, the right guard, Kovac, and Smiter, the right tackle, cleared out for Brown. Great block also by the freshman fullback who goes into that full house backfield. Aaron Evans, the freshman, he threw one here, folks. Right there, the fullback and the right guard watch their blocks. Now, there shouldn't be this big a hole down by the goal line, but there's some very good blocking there. They just cleared a huge hole for Brown to slip through. It's not supposed to happen down there. The West Virginian in 13 plays drives 80 yards to tie this one up. They took 439 to do it. And in that drive, Brown carried five ties for 51 yards. Will they hold on <laughs> through the fourth quarter? I'm going to keep my eye on them, see if they're still here. The Winter Wonderland in El Paso, Texas. We'll go indoors and up north tomorrow when the Washington Redskins and the Minnesota Vikings square off and the Vikings can wrap up the wild card with a win in that one. Pat. I see Wade Wilson is going to be starting a quarterback. I've seen them play a couple times this year. They are impressive with Wade Wilson. He's come up with a lot of big plays. Now they don't want Sanders to touch the ball even on a day like this. Ball ricocheted over into Thurman Thomas's hands. We will give you approximate yard lines. Because there's no way we can see him up here right now with that snow down on the field. And here's the defensive line that Oklahoma State will be working against. This unit, Pat? Very physical as all of Don Nealon's defensive teams are. It's one of those kind of physical, uh, hitching the mouth kind of defense. Bloody your nose. A real tough inside. Gundy inside flip to Thomas. Now the last time they touched the ball twice and scored. The flea flicker. You know, this is kind of actually an interesting uh, call of the little uh, shovel pass because if it's an incomplete, it, 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 it's not a fumble here. It, it's just kind of an under, under hand to hand pass there to Thurman Thomas. I think a safe call, a good call under these circumstances. This will bring up a second and five. They're at about at the 36 yard line. Thomas is stuck. This will leave them with a third down. We talked about how physical this West Virginia defensive front here is. Watch here as they get off the ball. Now, they don't slant like the Oklahoma State defense. They think they're tough and physical enough, and they try to fight off blocks and just stuff the hole like they did right there. A different defensive philosophy by the Mountaineers. i tell you, that nose man, David Grant, did a good job of filling that hole up. They weren't moving him out of the way. Bundy only a sophomore and a great year for Oklahoma State. So did this big fella, Thurman Thomas. He's got a first down. They are in the West Virginia territory with that 14-yard run. 
Well, it looks like Oklahoma State, even with the weather conditions like this, are still going to come out and be wide open. We've seen a shovel pass, then we saw them come down and run the option play. But what they really want to do for their big plays is throw the ball downfield to Dykes and Ronnie Williams, their tall, wide receivers. It may be a little bit more difficult in this kind of weather. Thomas follows the fullback into the hole. Got a couple of yards. Dale Jackson and Chris Herring, two of the linebackers, wrap him up. And Herring's out of Pueblo, Colorado. Promising sophomore, 6'2", 210 pounds. Let's make this a second and eight for the Cowboys. to Williams for the first down and the 25 yard line. I really like this Mike Gundy and the character he has shown all season long. He's a terrific leader not quite maybe as talented as some of the quarterbacks around but here he's looking for a six foot four receiver Ronnie Williams. We talked about he's matched up against number five Waters right there. He is only five eight. That's the matchup they like. Gundy says the first thing he does is look at the size of the defensive backs as he gets ready for a team. Gundy's hot. Three of three for 69 yards already in this game. And make it four of four as he swings one to Thomas. Let's go down to our winter wonderland himself, John Dockery. Well, thank Frosty. you, Brent. Just interesting, as you mentioned, uh, and you saw Thomas running in, uh, in Oklahoma State. It won't uh, affect him that much because you look down here, the snow, it's very fine snow, and the field is not that slippery at the moment. So the backs are able to cut, and they're able to run their offense. Brent, now back to you. John, run down there and sweep off some of those yard markers for me. We'll while you're at it. Here's the second down and nine. Off the play action, Gundy. That's it complete, and they're down to the 10 yard line. Ryan Keith, the tight end, the receiver. You know, some quarterbacks just do not let bad weather affect them. Some quarterbacks are wimps, and it bothers them, but Mike Gundy is one of those guys that just weather does not affect. They've run the ball inside two or three times there to Thurman Thomas, this time the fake. They get Gundy on the corner where he's been dangerous all year long because he has pretty good foot speed. The tight end crosses the formation from the left side, and it's a nice throw and a nice play. Mike Gundy's out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. He threw it to Keith. First and goal inside that 10-yard line, which you can barely make out. And Thomas busts one. Second touchdown for Thurman Thomas. Pat Jones says we'll go for one. This Where's is, the defense? <laughs> that rough physical defense we've talked about. Well, it's being out executed by a very fine Oklahoma State offense. Average 34 points a game on the year and set an Oklahoma State record for total yardage. Blanchard. With the extra point, and this would put the Cowboys up by a seven again. They led in this game, seven nothing. West Virginia tied it, and now Oklahoma State scores again. Two possessions, two touchdowns, and Thurman Thomas playing like a first-round draft choice here this afternoon. And he has done this for the last three years, his break tackles, real strong hips and legs. It's hard to get to his legs because he gets down so low and fights off blockers. See, it's real tough to get to his legs, so he'll break some tackles and scores easily. 5.16 to go in the first quarter. And eyes by the offensive lineman. And Pat Thomas took his first step to the right froze that inside linebacker and then came back and followed those pulling linemen and battled his way on into the end zone. Thurman Thomas Brent, has had a terrific year 1600 yards as you mentioned earlier I think the difference has been the play of Gundy because he hasn't had to carry the team this year as he did two years ago. The emergence of Gundy has really allowed Thomas to have a great year. Now Grantis Bell replaces Tally as the deep man out with a knee injury. It's 14-7. Oklahoma State has scored with both of its possessions here in the opening quarter. Bell, the 10, out to the 
20 and hammered down at the 21 yard line by Milton Cockrell, a cornerback out of Dallas, Texas. Boy, did he lower the boom. So now it's Major Harris's turn. He did get uh, the one touchdown uh, drive in the first quarter going against the win, so he has done what he was supposed to do against the win in the first quarter. A.B. Brown, the workhorse, they're at tailback. Follows a block by the fullback. It's out to the 26-yard line before Ricky Shaw, defensive end out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, tackled him for the Cowboys. John Talley is returning to the huddle for West Virginia. Number seven going out wide to the left, and so the knee injury obviously not serious. He's coming in motion toward you. That'll still leave them with about three yards for the first down. Well, we had a look at Major Harris there a moment ago. I have never, ever seen coaches or heard coaches talk about a player like the West Virginia coaches talked about Major Harris this week. He was a question mark, of course, he was a freshman at the beginning of the year, but as the season wore on, they think he is going to be a superstar in college football over the next three years. Brown and the heart of that. Oklahoma State defense led by Sim Brain wrapping him up. But they moved the chains for a first down. They got enough. Oklahoma State defense has some liabilities. We talked about them not having dominating players. And what they try to do is hide that by slanting and stunting and try to make it some negative plays on defense. So Major Harris in West Virginia moving the ball again into the teeth of the win. Not falling as heavily as he did there for a short time. Brown behind the right side of the offensive line. Battles his way for three or four more yards. He has carried 11 times already for 71 yards here for the Mountaineers. Now Harvey Smith will replace Calvin Phillips and bring the play in from Nealon's sideline. like uh, David Bailey, one of the Oklahoma State uh, strong defensive players, is walking off with a injured shoulder there, is waving his arm. Well, he was one of the guys they felt they needed to play very well inside to have a chance between David Bailey and Ricky Shaw on the defensive front for Oklahoma State. He'll be a big loss if he can't come back. So Harris and West Virginia face a second and eight. at their own 40-yard line. Harris could not find an opening, and Schaub brings him down, number 97. You know, as you look at West Virginia's team, a lot of times you can tell where they're going to run their ball, run the ball by the split of the offensive linemen. If they have big line splits, they like to run the ball inside with isolation plays with the fullback and tailback. When they go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, they're going to throw the ball or try to get the ball to the perimeter of the defense. Harris to throw and runs the draw out of there. here on the near side. We asked Talley to comment about his freshman quarterback, and here's what he had to say. I think he's done a tremendous job for our offense this year. I think he's a plus in our column as West Virginia. I think as seniors, we took him, you know, we grew with him as a quarterback, and, um, you know, we came up with him, so it seemed like we came up, like, as a young, real, real young team, and we just molded ourselves behind him, then... You no, know, we just let branch off from him, and it's a tie. Well, Major Harris has carried six ties for 29 yards, getting enough for still another first down. He was kind of remarkable. As a freshman, two weeks ago, he was voted his team's most valuable player by his teammates. Oklahoma State uses a timeout with 2.28 to go in the opening quarter. 
West Virginia spent one earlier. Well, next week, the Gator Bowl coming your way on CBS Thursday, and the airtime is 2.30 Eastern Standard Time. The Mazda Gator Bowl should be a good one, Pat. I have not seen South Carolina in person this year. We saw LSU. I was impressed with LSU early in the year, but I think that's going to be a very entertaining game. South Carolina wide open on offense. Todd Ellis. And then, of course, the Cotton Bowl, 1.30 Eastern Time. Notre Dame and Texas A&M. A&M defense is pretty good. No, it's first and ten for the Mountaineers. Smith going in motion. And they run the fullback. Greg Taylor and Ron William brings him down for the Cowboys. Oh, the blue-gray game is over, and the color gray comes up a winner. 12-10. Well, one of the things Don Nealon wanted to do was keep the ball away from Thurman Thomas and uh, Mike Gundy because we've seen how dangerous they are, but their play selection has been indicative of that 22 runs and only one pass. Now Harris, deep down the middle, almost intercepted. Ball was intended for Calvin Phillips. But there was terrific pass protection, and Weller and Deckard were both back defensively. You know, watch the pass protection, as you mentioned, Brendan. This pass protection all season long has allowed Harris to develop as a quarterback. The hands are out. There's no penetration. There's a terrific pocket there for Harris to have plenty of time to step up and throw the ball. But it's been a strength of that offensive line, I think, which has been a major factor in Major Harris's development this year. Third and seven. Ball is at the Oklahoma State 47 yard line. They run the draw with Brown. He gets an alley on the left side. Now first down for West Virginia. It's incredible to me. The, the weather hasn't affected either one of these offenses, has it? Not so far. You have to like the play selection by West Virginia. They throw the ball deep downfield a couple of times they have so far in the first quarter. They've pounded the ball inside. They've gone outside. That time they ran a little draw to Brown, play, Brown as he picked his way for the first down. So the ball is down to the Oklahoma State 27. It's first and 10. And they run the workhorse again. At that time, Marcus Jones held on the defensive tackle. Down to John Dockery, Doc. Brent, you and Pat have been talking about the traction the players have had on the field. One of the reasons they have it is it's a portable shoe store. On the Oklahoma State sideline, they brought all of these shoes with them, and most of the players have changed to this type of shoe. You see all the tiny little cleats, they're conical shaped, they get better traction on this snowy turf. Now back to you, Brent. All right, John. This is a second and seven. And Brown comes up the middle. Brandon Colbert, a backup nose man, tripping him up as he came through. Also went on that tackle. John, John Stroya, the left guard, number 75 for West Virginia, really is, is doing a nice job of controlling his man as well as Kevin Koch in the center. We've seen West Virginia has some real success running the ball inside. And if he can do that, it sets up everything else. It sets up the outside runs, of course, and the passes as well. 14 carries for 100 yards already for Anthony Brown. That's his fourth 100-yard game. And in a short yardage situation, they go to the wishbone and pop it straight ahead to move the chains. There's time running out here in the first quarter. And then West Virginia will have the wind at its back. They've only thrown two balls into the wind, so it'll be interesting to see if they change their philosophy a little bit when the quarter changes. And it'll be interesting to see what Oklahoma State will attempt to do moving into the wind for the first time. They were pretty wide open. Ball is on the 15-yard line. Brown straight ahead. Stop short of the 10. That'll do it here in the opening quarter. So we've come to the end of the first quarter. 21 points scored. And Oklahoma State leading 
West Virginia, 14 to 7. College football continues after this message and a word from your local stations. Five yards. The wide side of the field is to his left, and with his running ability, the option play for West Virginia down here has to be one of the plays they feature going in. They come to the short side with Brown, and he's got it. Boy, the fullback Craig Taylor really paved the way for him, Pat. Anytime you're in the eye formation, when your tailback has success, it means your fullback is blocking very well, and Craig Taylor has done that thus far in the game today. You gotta like E.B. Brown as well, Brent. The coaches told us, as we said a little bit earlier, he's probably a 1,200-yard back without the injuries. 16 plays, 76 yards, consumes 620. So they've had a 13-play scoring drive, a 16-play scoring drive. Extra point is added by Bauman, and we've got another deadlock at 14. You see weather like this, and you think you're going to have a low-scoring game, but that has not been the case. As A.B. Brown steps into the end zone for the Mountaineers, and they tie Oklahoma State. We got a dandy of a Sun Bowl brewing. It's the Mazda Gator Bowl, New Year's. to go with the score tied at 14. While you were away, there was a little sweeping activity down in the left end zone and at the end line, and he didn't go all the way across the field. We'll get an opportunity to show you that down in the left end zone here momentarily. Now a spot has been scraped clean for Bauman with the ball on going to be held because of the wind problem. It's 14 all, second quarter. This is the first return, and it goes over Sanders' head. Now, see that line there? See the end line? Now, look at where he stopped. Folks, there's still another good 25 yards out there. <laughs> he just, he swept to that spot, and he said, that's it, there's a pylon, I'm getting out of here. And he walked away with the broom. Well, it's, a more, it's more than a one-man job, I think. <laughs> All right, well, Mike Gundy was awfully tough in the first period, five of five for 86 yards, and they scored two touchdowns while running only 10 plays. Gundy brings the Cowboys up. Thurman Thomas has scored both the Oklahoma State touchdowns, and he breaks free again. Let's talk about Thurman Thomas right now, Pat, because there's been all of the talk on the draft list that you see about Lorenzo White, great running back up at Michigan State. Thomas not listed or rated that highly, and Coach Jones telling us yesterday that perhaps it's because one of the ligaments missing from one of his knees because of an operation as the sweeping continues with some of the West Virginia contingent jumping in there and grabbing the broom so they can get the sidelines swept clean here. Fumble, but he regained control. Thomas went back after it, wouldn't give it up. Well, Thurman Thomas does really have some assets. The, some of the people say he doesn't have great flat speed to outrun a lot of people. I think it was a little bit too hard a pitch and too flat, and that's why the ball bounced up. But he's a very strong runner, and he's a pretty good receiver as well. He's caught 19 passes this year. All right, the ball is on the Oklahoma State 26-yard line. This is a third down. Gundy forced out of the pocket. He is an excellent scrambler. Throws on the run to his tailback. And another first down for the Cowboys. 
You know, Brent, some coaches don't like their quarterbacks to scramble because bad things happen when quarterbacks scramble, but not Mike Gundy. It's a good thing. He's got some magic about him. His coaches encourage him to scramble, actually. He practices a scramble drill every, every day. I saw him on Wednesday practice it for about 15 minutes where the receivers keep practicing working back to him. Now the ball out to the Oklahoma State 40-yard line for this first down. Here's Thomas. And Brad Hunt would not let him go. The 6'2 senior from Ripley, West Virginia, holding on and bringing Thomas down. Brad Hunt has had a very good year, Brenda. And last spring, they thought he wasn't even going to be a starter because he was too overweight. Spent the summer in Spain in a year, a uh, summer away program, got himself in great shape, came back, and has had a terrific year and was elected captain two weeks ago. Gundy, straight back, throws complete. And Hartley Dykes battles for the first down. Let's see where they spot it. Well, I really like this Mike Gundy. I tell you, some guys drive their team with their personalities, and I think Gundy is like that. You know, leadership and when you're playing quarterback just means getting more of the people around you. I think he gets maybe 10 or 15 percent out of his teammates just by his leadership, his charisma. That one of the stories I heard, he was recruited heavily by the Sooners, but he preferred to go to Oklahoma State because they run the more classic drop back passing attack than the wishbone but he was a superb high school athlete up there in Oklahoma. Very very quick feet he really escape a lot of trouble uh, with those quick feet and he gives himself a lot of second chances that a lot of quarterbacks can't uh, can't do. Here's how you pick up the blitz at the top of the screen you'll see Ellis number 66 come in he tries to knock the ball down and that's Thurman Thomas going right underneath him. That's another thing Thomas is a very good blocker. Well, the ball is just about half a yard short of midfield. And here he comes again, Thurman Thomas. And this time he is crushed by Willie Edwards, the cornerback. You know, Thurman Thomas has a great burst. He's a very patient runner. You see his eyes there, but I'll tell you, he waits for things to develop, and then he just explodes through the hole. May have been a penalty flag thrown down there too. Yes, indeed, they're going to bring it back. This is going against Oklahoma State. The play is coming back. Holding on the line of scrimmage by the offense, still first down. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery. John? Brent, you've been talking a lot about Thurman Thomas, and if you look at his left knee, you'll see that it's covered with a sock. And underneath that is a lightweight knee brace, much like this, made of graphite, weighs less than a pound. Now, Thomas says he doesn't need it, but the coaches and the doctors want to wear it for precautionary measures. Now back to you, Brent. Thank you, John. It is now first and 20, the ball back to the 40-yard line, and Gundy scrambles out and not very far. Wrapped up by Ellis, the freshman linebacker out of Norristown, Pennsylvania. Well, there's a great difference between terrific flat ahead foot speed, which Gundy doesn't have in quickness. He's not going to outrun a lot of people in races, but he can dance around when he's scrambling and give himself some more time to throw. Ten minutes and 48 seconds to go here in the first half. Oklahoma State with the ball. draw again Thomas and Parker cuts him off the junior from Whitehall Pennsylvania wouldn't give him running room Gundy uh, explained to us why he likes to be a scrambling quarterback that's something that uh I've just done this this year, not as much last year, and the fact that I'm not really a big quarterback, being just six foot tall, I have to use uh, other sources of uh, ways of moving on the field. I can't just sit back there and see the receivers because the linemen are so tall. So I like to scramble around and try to get out in the open and make a big play. Pass was incomplete. Green, the receiver, the sophomore from Port Arthur, Texas, out of bounds. 
And Oklahoma State has not changed its style of play at all because of the weather. They've just been just as wide open going against the wind as they were going with it. The official was right there. It looked like actually his foot was right on the boundary, and that's why the official called him out. Yeah, that was a uh, big reason why they had to sweep the boundary, but that could be somewhat misleading, too. You bring that broom down there, and uh, it suddenly becomes a little bit wider of a boundary. Oklahoma State blocked. Honey is blocked, and it'll go out of bounds. On the far side of the field, Preston Waters, the cornerback, he got in and blocked it. Blocking punts is all determination. Waters, number five, just comes right off the corner. This is nice strategy, too, because of the weather conditions. You're just not going to get it off as cleanly. Waters came hard from the left side and did a nice job of taking the spot out in front of the left-footed punter so he wouldn't interfere with him in case he didn't get the block. West Virginia coming up to the line of scrimmage for the first down. West Virginia ready to go. They're at the line. Major Harris pulling back, throwing deep for Bell, and it's intercepted. Intercepted at the 11-yard line. Jerry Deckard, the free safety with an interception. And that was a very poor throw and decision by Major Harris. When you see a free safety in the middle of the field like Decker, number 47, was, you know you don't have the post route. So you have to come off to a secondary receiver. Usually it's somebody running an underneath route. But Harris forced the ball, and Decker was there the whole time to make the play. 9.41 remaining here in the first half. Oklahoma State and West Virginia tied at 14 in the Sun Bowl. Cowboys 17 yard line for this first down. You know, Deckard's quite a story. The man who just intercepted that ball. He's playing free safety today, but he started the season as an outside linebacker. Then they felt they had to move him back into, into center field because they needed some help there. He's done a remarkably good job. That was his fourth interception on the season. The West Virginia defense trots onto the field. And while well, we've got a break, there's a penalty marker thrown as they run Limbrick, the fullback, right straight up the middle, but there is a penalty flag thrown on the play here. That was the first down following the interception. Offside against the defense. Matt Jones, the Oklahoma State coach, he replaced Jimmy Johnson. And he has done a superb job with the Cowboys. West Virginia probably a little bit better this year than that six and five record would indicate. They lost some heartbreakers to Penn State and Syracuse. That Syracuse game, one of the best college football games of the year. Mm. Was that fourth quarter ever a dandy? Here's Thomas. Breaks a tackle. Gets out close to another first down. They'll move the chains again. He got it. Thurman Thomas gets so low to the ground, you get a little bit of a shoulder, but you can't get to his legs to bring him down. He is 5'11", but when he's running, he's probably about a 5'3". Five, five, Just tough to get to him. And once you do, he spins and churns for two or three extra yards. Great leverage that he gets. Now he goes off to the sideline, and they've got a tremendous backup. Barry Sanders, number 21. Watch and see when they get him into the offense. He's the lone setback right away. He's a game breaker, but not this time. West Virginia knew he was coming at him. Well, they call him Rocket Man. He has returned two uh, kickoffs or touchdowns and two punts, but it's been the pursuit here on this play by the West Virginia defense that brought Sanders down. Defensive fry 98, Grant fights off a block, and then Chris Parker fights off a block. Very physical defense, strong in the upper body. David Grant right there threw off his blocker in front of him and made the play. Ball on the Cowboys' 27-yard line. This is a second and 11 for Gundy. Fakes to Sanders. Now moving out of trouble. And hammered over there on the left side. Teddy Kester, number 53, the junior inside linebacker. 
<laughs> he got to him in a hurry. And Don, Don Nealon's really high on Kester, but what I like about Gundy is he knows where the sticks are, but he and he's trying to pick up the first down, but he bounced right back up after he got hit. And again, we talked about his leadership, and I think the players around him sense that leadership. They respect him for taking a shot like that as a quarterback and not limping off and rather get back into the huddle. We got a third and seven for the Cowboys. Ball on their own, 31. Sends the backs out, intercepted. Rodney Wilson, the sophomore from Washington, gets the turnover for the Mountaineers. Well, Wilson is the outside linebacker who just falls back into the play. It's a short drop by Gundy. It's a quick throw. He's trying to get it out there, but he's a tall man. He just jumped up and made a real nice play on it. The ball probably should have been thrown to either side of him and not probably trying to throw it over him. It's too tall to do that. No back-to-back -back turnovers here in the second quarter. Game tied at 14. Now they come back featuring Brown, and he's got an alley on that far side. Deckard finally got him out of bounds. Boy, we've got two superb tailbacks dueling here this afternoon, don't we? We have talked about West Virginia's offensive line. Watch the right side as they just blow their men out and give Brown plenty of room to go. Also, you'll notice that they're running to the short side of the field, and that's because Oklahoma State has been lining up their nose tackle to the wide side, so they take advantage of running to the short side of the field. Now they come up with the fullback, Taylor. Brown has carried 19 times for 132 yards here this afternoon. On their last possession, Harris went deep. This time, Coach Nealon's staff prefers a more conservative approach with the score tied at 14. And the he, ball is down at the 20-yard line of the Cowboys. And he probably should because Oklahoma State has not stopped the rushing play at all here this afternoon. <laughs> the officials sorting it out. And that's the second timeout used by Oklahoma State. They have only one left. Six minutes and 50 seconds to go here in the first half. Pat Jones getting a clarification. West Virginia and the Cowboys are tied at 14, and we'll be right back. UTEP and Florida State put 34 on the board back in the mid-50s. Major Harris on this second down, giving to Brown, and Brown is also seeking a record. 197 yards rushing is the Sun Bowl mark, and it's held by... Charles Alexander of LSU. He did it against Stanford back in 1977, and he already is approaching the 140 mark. You know, I like what Don Nealon is doing here. He, ordinarily, he switches his tailbacks, but Brown has been so hot, he just keeps giving him the ball. I think that's good coaching. Don't substitute when you have a guy with a hot hand. Third and seven from the 20-yard line. Harris keeps it. He was stopped short of the 15-yard line, and They'll have to get to the 12 for a first down. Drain. The linebacker put the knock on him. And UCLA. Probably still disappointed about the fact that they're not playing in the Rose Bowl. And without Gaston Green today, they kick a field goal and take the lead on Florida. Now Bauman's field goal will be a 33-yarder with the wind at his back. High snap. Ball put down, and Bauman gets it through. West Virginia takes the lead for the first time here this afternoon in the Sun Bowl. It's 17-14, 5.41 to go in the first half. And Pat Hayden, take an overview of what we've seen here so far. What I've really been in, in, in surprised by is the West Virginia defense really has not slowed down Oklahoma State's offense. I knew they were explosive, but I thought the defensive front would really control the line of scrimmage a little bit more. But Thurman Thomas and Mike Gundy have really done a job. And Bauman will put the ball on the tee and kick it off here for the Mountaineers. And while well, we got a moment, to remind you that the NFL coverage on Sunday starts at 12.30 with the NFL today. And some of you will see Green Bay, New Orleans, Tampa Bay, Indianapolis, St. Louis, Dallas, Detroit, Atlanta, and 
Pat, how about that Tampa Bay Indianapolis game? The Colts can win themselves a division title. That's the big one. I'll tell you, Ron Meyer has really done an outstanding job. Obviously, the uh, trade for Dickerson, his old college uh, player, has made a big, big difference, but their defense has really played well. Their front seven has done a nice job for Indianapolis. And you also saw the reminder that coming up with a doubleheader game, the Bears and the Raiders. We'll get an opportunity a little bit later. We'll talk about that. Kind of fun to see some different teams. Indianapolis and New Orleans in the picture. This year deserves New Orleans and Indianapolis to play in the Super Bowl. <laughs> they cut the heart out of the season early. Now, Oklahoma State features one of the most dangerous return men in all of football. Barry Sanders, number 21, standing back at the goal line. Out of Wichita, Kansas. He's only a sophomore. He'll step into Thomas's tailback spot next year for the Cowboys. Let's see if they keep it away from him all game. What a great kickoff that was into the end zone. Sanders wasn't sure if the ball was going to go out of bounds or go into the end zone. And it went in for the touchback. It'll come out on the 20. Well, he has returned two kickoffs for touchdowns going coast to coast, 100 yards, actually. First one was the first play of the season for Oklahoma State. He's also returned two punts for touchdowns. And now Pat Jones is getting asked to do uh, special teams clinics all over the country. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he said he wasn't much of a special teams coach until he put Barry Sanders back there. Now he's lecturing all over the country. Now Thomas returns a tailback. David Grant, the nose man, leading the defense that time. And the hole starting to close a little quicker on Thurman Thomas right now. Now for Oklahoma State, you can see that they scored with their first two possessions. Then there was the block punt and the interception. They trail West Virginia 17-14, approaching the five-minute mark of the first half. They started at the 20. Complete, but that Hartley Dykes is a dangerous looking receiver when he goes out, isn't he? I'll tell you, that's a nice play by Terry White, number two, the free safety who came over and made the play on Dykes without interfering on him. Gundy liked to get to the corner and looks for the tall guy. He's 6'4, but number two, Terry White's right there to come around him and bat the ball down with his left hand without the interference penalty. Pat, maybe they should change their strategy here working against the win. He was perfect in that first quarter. But now working against it, he has missed his last three and he threw an interception. And Terry White, many of you remember him. He had some great games at Ohio State before he transferred. Gundy on the scramble intercepted. And what a great read that time by Warren for the score. Darnell Warren out of McKeesport, Pennsylvania. play by Warren. This is supposed to be a screen back to the backside. Gundy is rolling right. He looks left. He's supposed to throw the screen there, but it's well covered. He comes to a secondary receiver, but Warren had read it all the way, got a running start on it, and made the play. That is good defense because they took away the first screen to the left, and then Warren made the interception. Bauman's been busy. Hammers another extra point. This is the record. Most points scored in the opening half of a Sun Bowl game. And West Virginia's got the best of it. The Mountaineers lead Oklahoma State by 10, and we'll be right back. Arnell Warren, number 54, is playing the inside linebacker. They, they take away the tight end screen first, and he comes all the way around here, plays in the zone defense, and makes the play on the interception. See Gundy looks to his left first, trying to go back to the tight end that's taken away, and there is Warren, 54, staying right at home where he's supposed to be, and gets a nice drive on the ball, but you have to wonder about Oklahoma State throwing the ball as much as they have been into the wind. Now, Darnell Warren had been a starter, but today he comes off the Mountaineer bench. He started 10 of 11 games this season, coming into this bowl, even called their defensive signals for a time, so a big moment. For Warren with that interception. And Bauman gets one back inside and 
Thurman Thomas brings it out for Oklahoma State. Well, you can see the turnovers in this game starting to add up. And what a difference the two quarters make as far as throwing into the wind and with it are concerned. Gundy in the opening quarter was five of five for 86 yards. In the second quarter, he's two of six for 19 yards and two interceptions. Now he'll try to get Sanders into this attack. Well, I think it's really important for Oklahoma State to get something on the board before halftime. 4.37 left. They only have one timeout. But the way West Virginia has been controlling the line of scrimmage offensively, it's important for them to get back into the ball game here before halftime is out. We haven't seen them to get the ball to the outside, guys. Dykes, enough. So we're in El Paso, Texas, with 4.17 to go in the first half, and West Virginia leading by 10, and Gundy throwing a quick pop to Dykes, who breaks his tackle, and then pulls two defenders with him. Willie Edwards rides him down. It's a 22-yard gain. Gundy to Hartley Dykes. And I like the way Gundy shakes off mistakes. He threw the two interceptions, but he comes right back here on the slant pass and drills the ball to Dykes. Fakes the pitch to Thomas that brings the inside linebacker up, that allows Dykes to slip in behind him. Penalty flag being discussed and marched off against West Virginia. Personal foul on the defense, 15 yards, first down. That moves the ball into West Virginia territory for this first down. The ball is at the Mountaineer 41 yard line. I think I said Sanders was the tailback. Thurman Thomas has been in there this series. Here he is following the fullback. It is hard for one defender to bring him down. Waters finally comes in. Breaking free from Dale Jackson. Now Thomas has already scored two touchdowns. He got the opener. Oklahoma State's second play from scrimmage. Then Brown ran in one from one yard out. Thomas came back with a nine yard touchdown. So it was Brown's turn. He scored his second for the Mountaineers. Bauman put West Virginia ahead for the first time. And then the interception and the return for the score by Warren. And that's where we now stand as Gundy breaks free from Jackson. But couldn't do much as Brad Hunt finally came over and brought the sophomore quarterback down. Dale Jackson has had a very nice year as Brad Hunt has for the West Virginia defense. Jackson had his paws on him first, really come on the last five games, and Hunt came all the way from the wide side of the field into the boundary to put the stop on Gundy. Now the ball is at the 39-yard line. It's third and eight for the Cowboys. Gundy. it off underneath and it's a first down J.R. Dillard and the tight end was the receiver and Gundy did a superb job of looking for his second option that time terrific pass protection here watch the left tackle number 62 Mike Wolf really put the last defender uh, away and allowed Gundy to step outside and make the play there's 62 that's Wolf he pushes him out which you can do in college football now use your hands and that allowed Gundy to get him the ball Ball is down to the West Virginia 31-yard line. First attempt. You know, good story about Mike Wolf, the offensive tackle, when we just saw him make the play. He was in a high school free safety and quarterback, and I think when you grow up being a back, you go through all the speed drills and the quickness drills. So that when they made him a lineman, he, he didn't think slow. He was awfully quick. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Blown on that snap as they came out. Wasn't that tremendous getting all the students and faculty and uh, folks together for that message? I think it took 164 takes, but they finally got it right. It was a very, very nice message. Yeah, can you imagine the director? <laughs> <laughs> a couple of thousand college kids, you think they're gonna listen to you? <laughs> well, we've had a wide open affair despite the snow and the wind here in El Paso. I've really been amazed how well both offenses have played uh, 
regarding the circumstances. I guess you expect it somewhat from a team uh, from the east like West Virginia. They play in bad weather, and Pat Jones said his team has played a lot of uh, wind this year. There's head coach Don Nealon. Maybe you're looking at the next Ohio State coach. Who knows? If not Nealon, then it'll probably be John Cooper out of Arizona State. Well, Nealon has really done a nice job at West Virginia thinking he's got to recruit against Pittsburgh and Penn State and Notre Dame and eight years there he's only had one losing season. You know he makes so much sense as the next Ohio State coach they'll probably hire somebody else. <laughs> you know he was at Bowling Green he was a fine quarterback did a good job of coaching knows all the high school coaches. First and ten now for Oklahoma State. They run the draw with Thurman Thomas. This has been a bread and butter play for him today Robert Pickett. The outside linebacker from Miami Florida brings him down for coach Nealon. His son in law is Jeff Hostetler. Backup quarterback on the injured list with the uh, New York Giants. Hostetler once was a quarterback at Penn State. He transferred because he wasn't getting enough playing time for Joe Paterno. And he, well, I'll tell you who liked that. That was coach Nealon's daughter. I thought that was a terrific transfer. Not so bad for coach Nealon either. <laughs> yeah, he was a pretty good college quarterback, you bet. Right now, Thurman Thomas in Oklahoma State on the move, trying to get something on the board here inside of two minutes in the first half. And Thurman Thomas carrying the load for the Cowboys. They'll move the chains. The ball is at the 20-yard line. Thomas, 15 carries for 64 yards here in the first half. And Oklahoma State has done a very nice job on this drive of running the ball inside. What they're trying to do is score a touchdown and use as much of the clock as they can. Stopped at the 19. How about that? How often you see a tackle? Mike Wolf carried that ball. He lined up at left tackle. He was the man I was talking about. He was a high school quarterback in free safety. He came around from the left tackle position, and Gundy gave him the ball. A lineman's dream. Didn't exactly well, score, though. Call that tackle eligible <laughs> for me. I love that. There is a penalty marker being discussed, however, as the result of that play, too. Talking about Wolf, and like I said, growing up as a, a, qu a quarterback in free safety, you think fast and go through all those speed drills so that when the other guys are big linemen, they're always thinking slow. I think it's a real advantage because when they moved into the offensive line, he's just much quicker and faster than most offensive linemen. So the ball has been moved back to the 25 yard line. Top of the screen, number 62, it's a little inside handoff. He's giving it his best, Thurman Thomas. Actually, he looks pretty good carrying the ball, doesn't he? Broke a little tackle there. So this is second and 15. Steps away from trouble. And the ball is complete there at the 21 by Dillard. That's his second catch on this drive. You know, Prince, some guys just have that have that uh, opportunity and just being able to scramble. The outside guys are going to go deep here, and the tight end just going to come across and find a little dead spot here. But I was talking about Gundy. Some guys just have this ability to buy a little bit more time and scramble there. See the tight end in the short zone, the wide receivers in the deep zone, and dumps the ball off to Dillon. Minute eight left on this third and eight now for Gundy, who steps out of trouble and caught a block. Drop at the five-yard line. Hartley Dykes couldn't hold on. And Dykes was thinking touchdown. Good pass protection as he steps to the outside. Dykes was going to turn as soon as he caught this ball and go to his right and get it in the end zone. He turned his head, the ball came out. Sometimes if you go out and catch the ball with your hands, that doesn't happen, rather than letting it come to your body and bounce off your body. Blocked. So they block a punt and a field goal here in the first half. West Virginia making the big plays. That was Theron Ellis, number 66, who made the block. 
He's a freshman, 6'1", and they think he is going to be a great athlete at West Virginia. Here, he comes right from the middle, gets the crease, and gets his big old paws up. Some help from the man over the top as well, but they really like this Theron Ellis. He's going to be a great pass rusher here for West Virginia. So here in the first half, the Mountaineers of West Virginia intercept two passes, return one of them for a touchdown, block a punt, block a field goal, and lead Oklahoma State by 10 points, 24 to 14. That'll be your storyline of the first half. We have 53 seconds to go, and don't forget Jim Nance will be coming along at halftime. He'll get you up to date with all the stories that have been developing. Have the latest scores. Earlier today on CBS and the NBA, Detroit defeated the New York Knicks. I'm sure Jim will have some details on that for you. So they drop the man down, let the clock run. They'll be content to go into the locker room with a 10-point lead. The option for Coach Nealon would have been to throw the ball deep with the wind at his back, although the wind has died down here considerably. If you joined us late, the snow fell during the opening quarter, but it stopped and it has not returned, although there are a few flurries in the air. The forecast was for some heavy snowfall in the fourth quarter. So it'll be West Virginia ahead at the half. 24 to 14.